Well, this is the day for what makes a great principal with myself and Allison Apsey. We are so, so excited. All right. So Allison has joined me. We're doing this on a Sunday before the book comes out because Allison's going to be on her anniversary, 25th anniversary, right? So that's yeah. a that's a big, right? Go. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. That's pretty amazing. And so we're recording this ahead of time, but we are eagerly anticipating uh, what makes a great principal. It actually is available now. You can check it out uh, in the link down below. So Alice and I were just gonna, we just decided let's talk about the book so people can hear about it. Well, we talked about why it's so important. And so instead of me interviewing Allison, she's gonna ask me a couple questions. I love this. I'm taking over. Yeah, you are taking over. You need your own theme music and and all (laughs) that stuff. So um, I that we I I cannot tell you like I'm so excited about this book. Uh, I don't like reading anything, (laughs) including my own writing. So I'm not gonna lie about that. But as yeah. I'm reading it, I am getting more and more excited about it because it just came together really, really well. And and I would I shouldn't say that because it's not just our writing. We'll talk more about that in a second. But we, you, we're gonna start with you. Like, what do you got? First of all, can I, before before you start with your questions, like, how excited are you? I'm so excited, and I'm I feel the exact same way. Like, I have read this book over and over and over <laughs> again. Right. And every time I read it, I'm like, this is so good. Yeah. And I feel like it's so hard to say that about books you've written, but I feel so confident in saying it because it's not just us. Yeah, we have so many, sure. it's, it's you, it's me, it's contributing authors. And like, we're able to elevate so many voices and I cannot wait. Yeah. I'm so excited that it's available now. I, I, yeah, this is so exciting. So, and the people that have read it so far have really, really loved it. And, and a lot of, and I don't know who these people are that have read it. So it's not like our buddy, it's not like my mom, my mom would love it no matter what. <laughs> right. So people that I don't know that have read it, I've loved it. So that, that makes me feel good. So I'm going to start, you can start like, here we go. Okay. All right. I feel, well, like, I feel very vulnerable. You should. All right. <laughs> I should. All right. Okay. Here we go. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about you start with, just tell us how did the book come together and you wrote about your principal Kelly. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Oh, you just kind of use, you just mishmash the, the questions all into one. That's sorry, sorry. No, I'm I, love not I love it. We talked about this and <laughs> this, is how, this is how it goes. So, okay. I, there is those two parts of this too. So, um, you know, because of a teacher is a, you know, really important series, um, that I've been doing. And I think that is, is really important to me sharing those stories. Um, and so Alice and I, I remember calling you and saying like, Hey, we like, we should do like a principal version because of a teacher and you're like yes and this was a couple of years ago and I, I remember this distinctly but then you were kind of started bugging me about it <laughs> and, nah. yeah and then you were kind of like all, all over me on this oh. you were you were you were a little bit and and I, I just I and I gave this advice to someone the other day and it's not and it's not advice that I don't take myself and I think that's why I'm sharing it like I felt at the time I'd be writing a book just to be writing a book, not because it really hit me or was something I was really compelled to write. And then, uh, you, cause you just write books every other week. And I've like put a moratorium. You can't write a book for at least a year. Okay. So can we like pinky promise me that, right? Let's let this one sit for a little bit. We're going to enjoy this release. Yes. I love it. Okay. So you notice how she just didn't answer the question, but whatever. So, I then and then I just kind of I dismissed it. I was like, it's I'm just there's just something missing because I don't want it to be this. I I don't want it to be this. It's it's got to be something a little bit unique. So when I read your book, Leading the Whole Teacher, I, I was so amazed. And I I truly love that book. And I'm not saying it because it's on your podcast. I'm not saying because it's in the link down below and you can also pick up a copy. But I I was I I don't you know when someone when you speak somewhere and someone says, that was actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like what do you mean actually what were you expecting and i kind of like i i knew you were a great writer i always loved your writing but it blew me away how good that book was and i thought you did such a good job of really kind of making your points and giving really good strategies but doing the research backing it up and not and i will tell you i hate most education books because i feel they're so research heavy and they don't 
like, it's like all these things and all this meta analysts and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. But I'm like, okay, this is good, but I can't, it's so boring. I cannot get through it. But then on the other side of it too, I, I, I felt like, Hey, maybe there's like a combo here. That's, Ooh. that's when the light came to me. And I remember reading it. I actually remember sitting on side, reading your book. I'm like, I got it. And then I like contacted you and I said, like, why don't we do kind of like a, because of a teacher where I, you know, we do some stories, but you got to hit that research. And like, we got to figure out like, what's this framework we're going to look at? Why is it important? We, we talked about not doing acronyms because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm very, I know, I, I don't think all acronyms are bad, but I hate when you see a leadership book and it's like, lead it, all you need is in these four letters i'm like you just looked for those letters right. right so we had to say like what's really important whether they make a word or not and that was like really important to me so i just that was when it really really hit me and then it made a lot of sense and so um and we'll we'll I'll ask you more about this too i said like hey can i'll do a story you do the research behind it and so that it's you know really kind of meaningful but then there's 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 the backup of it too so it's not just like this is all story but you did such and that was i was really impressed with how you you did what you did in leading the whole teacher in this book as well like i was really amazed because you do have a really great knack of making research readable is that a horrible oh. thing to say oh i love that not, and, and i know it's not a bad thing to say to you but it's a bad thing to say that do you know what i mean like that's where i struggle with it sometimes yeah, no, I actually remember when you texted me about leading the whole teacher. I was in the Costco parking lot in Augusta, Georgia, and you texted me and said, I really love this. And like, it just filled my heart because I call you my Simon Cowell, because <laughs> you tell me when you don't like it also, well, so it, which also makes those compliments and positive feedback all the more meaningful. Simon Cowell's actually got nicer as he's got older. So maybe that's what it is. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe, I, don't, I, I don't know that for sure, but he's not, you don't see those clips like, you know, when he first started. So maybe, right, right. maybe I'm just softening a little bit, but that, oh. that is, and I, I, I do pride myself on um, people that I really appreciate and aspire that I tell them the truth because mm -hmm. I think that is really important. And so, you know, um, that really connected with me, how you wrote the book. And then you had mentioned this and, um, so we, we both have been principals and that matters. We have experience doing this, but the, the premise wasn't like, Hey, we know everything about being principals. So we're going to tell you how to do it. Like, that's not what it was. I felt that, um, it was because a great principal really changed my life. And I talk about Kelly Wilkins, not only in this book, but all the time. Um, the, I don't, do, I, like that he he goes by teachers on fire he i know he's in bc and i can't remember his actual name you know who i'm you know who i'm talking about right i i know teachers on fire but i can't right not, he's got to help you out. <laughs> yeah he's, he's wonderful and he actually messaged me and i think it was right before this book came together and it was, maybe it was like subliminal he said more stories about kelly <laughs> oh and he said that to me i remember that because he's like wow like every time you talk about her it's like such a brilliant idea and okay. I'll tell you, like, I went from, and I don't know if you feel this way. And, and by the way, this is one of the things I love about the book. Alice and I don't totally agree on everything. <laughs> and uh, that, that I think that's because it's, we don't want to say there's only one way to be a great principal, right? It's we want people to kind of like, hey, here's some ideas. You got to figure it out still because we don't know your community. We don't know, you know, what you're dealing with where you are. So that's why we think it's really applicable is because we're giving you ideas, but you got to find the solutions and that that's really important. But, um, Kelly, like I, I, I felt like when I had Kelly, uh, as a principal, I, I didn't know how great a principal could be. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't realize it, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like, I thought, oh my God, my principal sucks so hard or they're so bad. And I never really thought about it. It was just kind of like a job that somebody did in our school. But then when I had Kelly, it just, I, I legitimately can say I, my life changed because of her. Like, wow. like I'm not saying professionally only professionally, hundred percent, but personally, and I just look back at how much I learned from her and not only learned from her because she actually became the deputy superintendent in our district, but 
how I became open to learning from other really great principals and those stories, some of those stories are shared as well. Um, because she just showed me there's, you know, what you bring out in people. And I think part of it too, is not only just Kelly, but asking the question, like, like what's something, you know, uh, like, like when you think of a great principal, I've been asking this for literally two years, when you think of a great principal, what's something you think of, or who's somebody you think of and why? And the, the consistent, I would say 95% of the time, it, it's like around the idea of they saw something in me that yeah. I didn't see in myself. Yes. And yes. I never, you know, I went from, I, I'm, I'm going to quit teaching. I hate it so much to, okay, I'm going to take this temporary contract with Kelly. And then in one year, assistant principal, two years later, principal, you know, two years later, division principal. And I was like, what a turnaround from, I hate this profession. Like I've just soured on it to like, wow, I can't imagine doing anything else, you know, like being associated with anything else. And, and I can, you know, credit it to you know, I, like, let's, I'm not going to say it's all Kelly. Cause I did, I like, whenever someone's like, oh, you did all this for me. I'm like, no, no, no. Maybe I gave you a nudge, but you still have to do stuff. Right. And I think that's, that's the point of it too. It's not like this person saved me. And if it wasn't for this person, like they did everything, but they help you ignite something in yourself that if you're willing to be open to it, that's when things change. So Absolutely. as much as I give credit, like, it's not like I didn't do anything. I did something. Right. Right. right? I think we have to that's recognize important that to me. Yeah. all relationships are reciprocal. Yeah. Even like from leader to teacher, they have to be reciprocal. But this, the story that you just shared just illustrates the profound impact a great principal can have on a teacher and as a person, because it goes well oh. beyond just your professional life. Yeah. And that, that actually leads to my question for you. And I'm going to separate them in two since that's what we talked about. <laughs> but you, that was like one of the things that we thought was really, really key to this book. So we, we wanted this to be, um, you know, share our perspectives, share, you know, our writing styles. And th that's one of the things that's actually, I, I found really is, people have always talked there that I've got feedback. It's like your writing styles complement each other. So the, like, and I think when you, they complement, it's not that they're exactly the same. Like they, and it, I think this is one of the things I talked about in the book that when you are a principal and you're looking for assistant principal, don't hire you, right? right? Hire right. someone who's different than you because not only it will give you different perspectives, but there's a, there's like, it will appeal to different people, right? Right. Right. So like, you know, people that, you know, as much as I, people are like probably on this podcast, they're like, wow, this is the longest this guy's gone without bringing up sports. <laughs> I'm proud right? of you. And you probably, I don't know if you would, you know what I mean? But that's I, like, there's things that you'd bring up that I wouldn't. And so, um, so when we talked about it, we said, we want to actually get this from the perspective of, um, not just ourselves and the stories and the research that we've done, but how can we not only tap into principals who have done the job and that's like a kind of a snippet, but uh, teachers and students who benefited from a great principal and actually ties into the pillar. So can you talk about that process? Because I actually said, here's a couple of people, but I'm going to kind of let you run with this. And Allison did so much work, you know, working with all these incredible educators but talk about that process of like, you know, what you look for in the collaborators that we're sharing to this book, because it's not just ours, right? We, we, we did write it with um, some really incredible people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we found people through tweets that they put out about their yeah. great principles through personal connections, but really it started with the question of, have you had a really right. good principle? And then if the answer is yes, then the, the follow-up is tell me about that principle. And we had already identified the five pillars. So yeah. we knew um, how the, the structure of the book was going to be, but we really wanted to hear the stories. And, and that's key because every contributing author shares a story. They don't just share, they share like the, the story, then how it impacted them personally. And then the, the impact and the ripple effect that they saw in the school based on that really great principle exhibiting that particular pillar. And it just, it is so beautiful. And like, George, I love your writing. You are, you crack me up. Like every time I read something you've uh, written, 
Yeah. Like you throw in like this, these witty comments that just <laughs> like, I just crack up and that is not how I write. I try to write with story and personality, but I, I'll, I feel like I'm like, you're like the funny guy. I'm like this, the, the straight laced like yeah. person. And then we go into those personal stories. So it's like how the book flows is, it is just something really unique and really beautiful. And I think it's going to speak to aspiring principles and current principles mm -hmm. in really profound ways. Yeah. And by the way, national principles, uh, day is coming up when you're listing this, so it would be a great present. It's available now. <laughs> and it could be the nudge your principal needs, right? Oh, that wow. is also, we, you know, we're hoping like, hey, like sometimes you go like, hey, I got you a present, wink. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you should really read this. This might be helpful. And that, I think that's that, that was, you know, when we talked about um, the five pillars and why they're important, the, this, and I've been arguing this for a long time. I, I know a lot of people, and maybe this is a reference, like the Danielson framework, right? There's these four areas and it's like, do these things. And one of the questions I always ask, and I'm not saying it's not valuable, but has Charlotte Danielson ever been to your school? Right. right. And so, so it's like, well, no. And I said, well, how, how do you know those things work for your school? So, so like, it's instead of like defining every single point. And I, and by the way, I don't think, Charlie Danielson is doing that at all. But sometimes, you know, like a lot of things that people create sometimes become a muddied version and then they kind of just taken over and then everyone has a perception of them. So we were very explicit, like, hey, we want to give you big ideas, but kind of figure this out. Figure this out what it looks like in your school, start talking to people, start having conversations with other principals, what, what they're doing. So you can find like unique solutions. Yeah. And even when, even with the, the design of the cover. And it was interesting because you threw it out and people started picking it up that we said, Hey, here are these five pillars and you can see the pillars on the cover of the book, but they're all a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of unique to the sense that, Hey, not only the pillars are different, but it actually shows that like there's flexibility in kind of, it's not like everything has to be the same. Right. 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 It's just like, Hey, there's things that, our schools need to kind of stand on, but also, but you have to figure that out. What, what it kind yeah. of looks like. Yeah. So you, you like, as we put this book together, you talked about this flow, the flow of this all coming together. And like, so t talk about that. Like, cause the, we won't get into the pillars. We're going to kind of save that, but. Uh, yeah. I, I want to mention too, that like, I had the fortune of spending 19 years as a principal of mm -hmm. all levels. I became a principal when I was like two. So. Right. Yes, just kidding. Happy, happy birthday. Happy 20th birthday. <laughs> I, I did not become a great principal until I became a humble and yeah. vulnerable principal. And I think that's the lens that's really important to have when you read this book, because there are so many great ideas. Like you have to be open to them. But also we provide some framework, question structure in order to help the book and all of those ideas be digestible so that you're walking away with, all right, how could this look in my school? What are my action steps? Can I, I got to ask you this question. And we didn't talk about this, but I'm maybe putting you on the spot. So if you, if you blow this, I'm just going to cut it out. But <laughs> so if okay. it's here, you know, you did a good job. Okay. Um, so you left the principalship. And that's when, that's when we kind of started talking is right when you, you know, went on to do some of the work that you're doing today with the consulting and speaking, did you find, did you find, I know I felt this, but not only did you see like a, like you kind of took a step away, you're like, oh, like you kind of seeing things from a different viewpoint, but then also I think there's something with that too, because you know, there's a, there's a lot of conversation. Oh, you're the principal. You haven't been there in a long time. Well, there is something valuable when you kind of step away from it too. And it's like a different perspective. And so, <laughs> but that, you know, there is like you, when you're kind of in the middle of something, you don't realize until you kind of step away. Right. Do you find, do you really find any of that? Happy. And like, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not always like, and, and I'm not saying, oh, now I'm all knowing there's also, there's also the perspective like, oh, when I was reading some of the stories that the teachers wrote, I'm like, I never thought of that. And right. it's like, I, you know, I wish I would have known that. So that was that even when I'm going through this, I'm like, Oh my God, did I miss a point? Did I miss an opportunity? 
right? There, yeah. there, I had so many of those moments reading those stories. Do you, did you find that at all? Like yeah. you kind of stepped Absolutely. away and you're like, yeah. So t talk about that. Yeah. And I think, so I stepped away, but I also am in schools yeah. like a hundred days a year. Yeah. So not only did I step away from kind of being in the weeds of the principalship, but I also then get to see principals in action because I'm there all day. Like I see kind of exactly what's going on. I visit them every month. So that's part of the work that I do. And that's been really powerful. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I look at those stories and I think of myself as a principal and think of things that I paid attention to that I shouldn't have paid attention to or right. things that I should have paid attention to that I didn't. Um, and and I'm, a re I'm very reflective. And I think that has that has helped me look from the lens of like, what are the, what's the big picture? What are these five pillars? Like they're informed by research. There's Wallace Foundation studies. There are studies out there that give point us direction of, you know, what, what it takes to be an effective school leader. Yeah. But what they don't provide, what our book does provide is how does that look like? What does that look like in practice? What yeah. do each of these pillars look yeah. like in practice? And not only do we share what they look like in practice from Allison's perspective, from George's perspective, but also from the perspective of teachers, students, and other principals. So there's just a, a plethora of voices and ideas that help us to step back from being in the forest or being in the trees and look at the forest level. Yeah, you know, so as you were saying that, one of the things, because that, that's one of the reasons it's like, hey, we want you to, we're giving you big ideas, but you still got to figure this out. Because when people say something like this to me, well, study show this work for like 90%. I'm like, well, what about the other 10%? What do you do? What do you do? Do you know what I mean? So it's like, so like, hey, we hit a certain mark. So like, ah, too bad, everyone else. So part of, and this is like a big thing I talk about in the innovator's mindset. It's that idea of that you still have to know your community, that some of the stuff you might see in this book, and you're like, you know what? I don't know if that's going to work this way in my school. But if I tweak this, if I do this a little bit different, if I, and that's the whole point. It's you still got to know your community. You still got to know who you're serving. You still got to know what you have access to. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's what that's always mattered to me. Um, one, Kate, by the way, we got to give a little shout out to Katie Martin because Katie Martin, uh, yeah. I, who I like trust with my life. You know, I had hit the shout out <laughs> button once, right? Um, she, I had her go over the book, right? And she, she's always like, she really helped me with the interviewer's mindset. She's just got such an amazing eye. So like huge credit to her. Um, because she was, she was like, I, I just tell her to fix my stuff. Cause I know she knows how I think. And, and I, I was like, be nice to Allison. Cause she's not used to. She was so sensitive with amazing. me. Like, please, I know. Please, please just like... it, yeah. But <laughs> she, she said, so one of the, I'll share one of the pillars. We talked about being visionary and how that's so important. And I wrote a little bit and she challenged me in saying, well, you wrote the innovator's mindset and you're not really giving a vision of what school should look like. And I'm like, I could, but that's not my role. My role is for you to figure that out because I don't know where you're at. And she's like, okay, that's fair. That, and that was like, and that's why I talked to her is because there's things that She's like, she'll ask me and push me on. And, I, and then she's like, okay, that, that totally makes sense in that process. Because if I, and I wrote this in interviewer's mindset, if I can like tell you what innovation looks like, then it's not innovative, right? You got to figure that out. And that's the whole idea is like you, as much as we want to provide you ideas, you still got to see yourself as a solution. That, that's really important. Right. And I think visionary is a perfect example of that, where we talk about what, is a visionary leader mm -hmm. and then how to to become visionary but then that has to be personal what the vision yeah. is for your school and it has to be collaborative and developed with your yeah. school team um yes yeah, so and, and that's true with every pillar we're talking about what does this mean what does this look like what yeah. are some strategies to get there but then you take it from there well and i will share one little snippet from the book about this the visionary thing was really and i remember texting you about this i'm like visionary has to go last yeah. and it has to be explicitly last because you don't know who you have at your school you don't know what resources you have you don't know all these things and too often and this is where things can go wrong is a new principal comes in and says here i am here's what we're doing 
And it's like, nah, <laughs> we'll, we'll just wait you out. We will right. just wait you out. And cause you know what? We've seen this before, but if you really go into the space and understand who you serve, understand what you have access to, that's when the vision starts being created. If you go into a school and you've already decided the vision, I, already, I can tell you the vision is going to fail because right. like, you can't do it on yourself by yourself. And that's, that's, that's a, that's a theme that goes out throughout the book is that great. And I shared a little story about basically really great principals and great referees are very similar in the sense that when they're great, you don't typically notice them. You can see the game, right? But if they're bad, you notice them. Right. 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 If you are like, always look at the ref, you're like, Oh wow, this ref's terrible. If you don't notice the ref, they're doing a great job. Absolutely. And that spoke to me at my core, because when I left my last principalship, I wanted them to be like, selfishly, I wanted them to be like, Oh my gosh, Allison, you know, mm -hmm. we miss you so much when I connected with them. But my leadership core was like, I wanted them to feel like we're carrying on, like yep. things are as normal, yep. even without you yep. here, because that's what true leadership is. That's what visionary leadership is. And just listen to that part. There's a part about fingerprints that I know you left. And there's a part about that in the book that you have to check out, which is available now. What makes a great principal? Allison, thanks for recording this on a Sunday. Uh, I don't know. You're probably right now, as this is playing, you're probably on a beach, just enjoying anniversary stuff. And here I am just working away. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Or Allison did um, like such an amazing job. I honestly like, and we've become like besties through this whole process, um, right? Yes. Yes. It's yes? Been, okay. It's so you wonderful. agree with that? You agreed with that? I one? agree. Yes. Yeah. You the last time I tried to have kind of my learned. bestie. <laughs> right. So, hey, everyone, check out the book. We are so excited about it. Let us know um, if you read it, you know, uh, what your hopes are for the book. We'd love to hear that in the comments. But if you use the hashtag, what makes a great principal, I'm going to put myself on, on blast here. Uh, we have a site called what makes a great principal.com where we post and stuff. And that's hopefully <laughs> there's going to be stuff there. Hopefully it's nothing there it's as great. I'm recording this, but it should be coming. So anyways, thanks for listening. Allison, I love working with you. I, I, um, I, I wish, I wish you the best on this book. <laughs> you do right back at you. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Thanks for being here.